question, um, you know, how are, are, are we really going to, to um, create standards for the teaching profession without teachers in the room? And in Wisconsin, the answer is literally, yes, literally. Two weeks ago, they were in a room at the Pyle Center, um, the state <coughs> accountability design team, um, quad chaired by Governor Scott Walker, Republican Senator Luther Olson, Republican Representative Stephen Castell, and um, DPI Superintendent Tony Evers, um, together with a rubber stamping group of 29 people, including charter, uh, Wisconsin Manufacturing and Commerce heads, oh my God. Uh, charter schools, school choice, um, uh, there were some technical college people there, and, and only one teacher. And the teachers union refused to participate because they said, how can we, we can't trust the good faith of, of, of these people. Um, and you're talking about the uh, policy implications of the ideal of everyone being of incalculable value. Well, the right wing really understands that. We might not understand that so well, but the extreme right wing in this country, for the past 40 years they've been working on this plan, and they understand that. So in that room two weeks ago at the Pyle Center, they were talking about curriculum and curriculum standards and benchmarks, and they had no qualms saying, well, we need to talk to the corporations and the businesses to see what kind of workers we need, and then elaborate those um, back into educational benchmarks back to the earliest ages to four years old. So, this is not science fiction, this is real. They're talking, and the very specific things they were talking about, being able to sit still in your chair, being able to take <laughs> feedback well from an adult. Um, you know, so that's, they are, with they, and they are making that happen in Wisconsin, all in the name of um, accountability. Um, <clears throat> in the, so I'm just gonna, that's, you know, that was just a nice segue to that. This team is meeting again um, next week. They have four more meetings. I'll be there reporting on that, and there are observers allowed, so they haven't said exactly where they're meeting, but I'll make sure. And if you sign up on the list, then you know where it's going to be. So you can see for yourself the horror unfolding uh, before our eyes. Um, and it is a horror. I've taken it upon myself to be witness um, to this horror. Um, and have been at every hearing for, there, there are two major bills now going through the state uh, legislature involving public education. One is um, SB 22, a charter school authorization board um, bill, which creates, uh, which takes the um, authorization, it doesn't take authorization power away from local school districts, but it offers an avenue to, to um, go around the authority of local school districts to get a charter school authorized and for the first time opening up Wisconsin to charter school franchises, including uh, virtual charter schools. So included in this bill are, um, there are no limits now on enrollment in virtual charter schools. Um, and this is where the, the um, Gates Foundation long-term strategy is paying off because they sell all their equipment um, you know, and software to these virtual charter schools. Um, so the authorization board uh, for charter schools, if you want to operate a charter school in Wisconsin, if this bill passes um, you, and your local school district doesn't see fit to authorize you, you can go to the state level board, which is basically um, political appointees of the governor, um, and they can authorize your school. And with that authorization, um, they'll give local school districts 90 days to, to, um, to either choose to authorize it themselves or decline. And if they decline, they still, money will still be taken out of local school districts' budgets to fund these schools. Um, so it completely undermines local control of schools. Um, and also part of this, although um, teachers um, will not have to be unionized, they will still have access to state, um, state health insurance and pension funds if they want to. So they'll be able to um, sort of suck off of the resources, the public resources while maintaining, you know, basically t taking the, all the public gain and, and putting the risk on the public sector. And it's very, very explicit in this bill. This bill was just referred out of, uh, out of the Senate Organization Committee earlier this week into Joint Finance 
it has to go through joint finance because it's going to cost the state a lot of money. It's going to cost school districts a lot of money. So joint finance has to um, has to has to deal with it unless, according to state state um, senate rules, the state organization committee, the the chair of the state the senate chair of the joint finance committee agrees to let the Senate Organization Committee take it out and just put it on the Senate floor. And the, the, the person who's in that position is our own Alberta Clipper Walker's darling, like um, <laughs> Alan likes to say, uh, Alberta darling, who um, I'm just looking at Nicole in the audience. <laughs> she, you know, probably stole her recall election a couple weeks ago, but at any rate, she basically has proved She'll do whatever um, the, the uh, Walker and Fitzgerald want her to do. So heads up, that could be hitting the Senate floor any day now. The other bill is a sort of omnibus education bill to sort of clean up, um, clean up the rest of the public schools, um, take care of them. It's SB 95, also Assembly Bill 130. That's also um, in joint finance. Um, so this has nine different components, I'm not going to go through it all, but um, some of the more heinous ones are um, allowing uh, teacher firings based solely on the standardized test scores of the students. Um, is, um, SAGE is uh, federal funding for, for state, school, state, state funding, state, state funding um, for, what does it stand for? Guarantee for uh, schools with high poverty, um, and it guarantees small class sizes. And there are the, the theory behind it is, um, <clears throat> well, as Bill said, kids learn better in small class sizes, and kids who are economically disadvantaged really need that um, need that help. So this basically dismantles Sage, um, but it, it allows schools to take Sage funding, but it gives schools the option to only have SAGE in one grade, and yet they can take funding for all grades. So that's part of this bill. Uh, another part is um, making it um, legal for schools to discipline um, students based on their behavior outside of school, so they can access law enforcement records to discipline kids. Um, another part is give, giving um, physical education credits for sports participation, and um, that got one Republican all up in arms because he used to be a gym teacher. Um, <laughs> so he voted against it just because of that. So there's a political strategy, you know, on those gym teachers. Um, and what else? Oh, uh, uh, expulsion. It makes it, basically, it makes it really easy to expel a kid and difficult and, and easy to not re um, readmit a kid after a kid's been expelled from school. So these two bills are working their way through the legislature. The accountability design team is um, what's driving this is money. Um, what's driving all of this reform is money and access to public coffers. Um, and the money involved is money that is going to come out of the state uh, state education funds to purchase testing materials, uh, assessment materials, and technology. And the people who are going to sell this are the very people who are quote unquote facilitating all of these uh, task forces. Um, people from the American Institutes of Research, which have um, uh, contracts with military departments, contracts with many, many different states who are engaged in these reform um, efforts. Um, so, because, um, you know, the stage is set for this and that their rhetoric, they can use the rhetoric they use because uh, all over the country, but in Wisconsin in particular, for the last 18 years, there's been a systematic divestment uh, in, in public education thanks to our state funding formula, which puts a cap on revenue that school districts can generate and at the same time, um, for, you know, costs go up. But school districts aren't allowed to raise money to meet those costs. The one cost that was up until, was it last year, two years, the qualified economic offer to teachers um, was, that was to, to basically to forestall any labor, labor struggles so that if they couldn't, districts couldn't come to an agreement with the teachers union, 
they were automatically, they had a 3.8, was it 3.8%? What was it, TJ? 3.8%. 3.8, oh, you were shooting your head, no. 3.8% uh, oh, raise, but that, was, that, that wasn't was was really a raise, because what that was was a subsidy to health insurance companies, because all of that got, e got eaten up by health insurance costs. So um, it is a hydra, it is multi-headed, and they have been working on this for, 40 years, if not longer, and because in a state like Wisconsin, they all of a sudden, they, they have a monopoly on political power, um, they're ramming it through as fast as they can. And we need to be smart about it, we need to understand the rhetoric, um, and that, that it is just rhetoric, and, and really dig deeper into what are the forces that are, uh, that are um, pushing this agenda forward and, and, and resisting them in a smart way. Um, I think that's... All I have to say, well, you know, and yeah, that's all I have to say on the state level, except all of you know, $1.6 billion in cuts, you know, to, to education. It's, it's starving the beast, claiming that schools are failing because you fail to resource them and then come in for the kill shot and uh, privatize. So Will is going to talk about how, how that is happening in our very own school district.